both enjoyed our stay here, but it was time to move on. We continued our journey west along Highway 123 to the town of Newberry. We were told we had a pretty good chance of seeing a moose along this drive, but perhaps someone was pulling our leg. However, we did spot a laundromat, so you guessed it, laundry day. This ended up being a rather long day for us, and little did we know what was ahead. Our goal was to reach Bay Furnace Campground and stay a few days, if we could find a walk-in site. But this was Friday, so we knew it would be a gamble. As we approached the town of Munising, we witnessed an unfortunate accident. Our dash cam recorded the event. It looked to us that a pickup truck pulling a trailer had pulled off the road, perhaps to let cars pass before making his left turn into the KOA. Several cars had passed the truck, however, just as he pulled back on the road and began his left turn, a smaller blue car was overtaking him. The truck collided with the smaller car and sent it crashing into the KOA sign. This all happened so quickly in front of us that we were both a bit shook up. Wads immediately stopped the van and jumped out to see if he could be of help. Some folks from the KOA had heard the crash and were already headed towards the car, so Wads went to the truck. I was on the phone calling 911. Many people stopped to help. Wads told me that the older couple in the truck with their dog seemed to be okay. Shook up, but alert and talking. The woman in the smaller car was shook up as well, but she appeared to be okay. Bystanders helped comfort people and direct traffic until responders arrived. An officer asked if we could stay until he had a chance to look at our dash cam video. We were glad to be of assistance, but it was getting later in the day. Our first stop in Munising was to check out availability at the campground, and it was full. So we took in some views in the day use area and came up with plan B. Where are we now? Munising. So that's that Grand Island or whatever? Island Royale? Or I think I need my jacket if we're going to stay out here. He wants to. Skip! Skip! You go potty? He does just want to sniff. Bay Furnace Historic Site and Interpretive Trail is a short eighth of a mile accessible trail that encircles the recently stabilized ruins of a blast furnace where pig iron was made between 1870 and 1877. Bay Furnace was abandoned in 1877. Over the next century, the upper portion crumbled and the unique arches were in danger of collapse. The USDA Forest Service stabilized the remaining ruins in 1992 to prevent additional damage. We drove over to Munising Falls to see if this might offer us an overnight parking area. We did see another van in the parking lot, but there were several park ranger trucks circling about, and we just didn't get a good vibe. But while we were there, we did take the hike up to see the waterfalls. And the mosquitoes were ferocious. Munising Falls is a waterfall located in the westernmost portion of the Pitchard Rocks National Lakeshore. The falls drop about 50 feet over the sandstone cliff. With exception to the spring thaw, the amount of water falling is relatively small. In the winter, the falls freeze, forming an ice column. That would be really spectacular to see. However, I can't imagine being up here in the winter months. 
By the time we finished our walk, we were really ready to make some dinner and call it a day. We noticed a local hospital nearby and checked it out as a possible overnight spot. Honestly, I don't think I even called to ask if it was okay. We watched the sunset while we had some dinner and before long we both headed to bed. We left early the next morning without any problems. We did luck out and find a campsite at Bay Furnace just as a couple was leaving, so we were free to stay as long as we wanted. I really had my hopes up for a boat cruise along the National Lakeshore. This is always tricky because we have skip to consider. I made us reservations on one of the first trips of the morning. We blocked the sun from coming in the windows and left the AC running for him. We didn't know it at the time, but the concierge boat service might offer free dog kennels. So be pushing us along today at top speed of about 27 miles an hour. On behalf of Picture Rocks Cruises and the National Park, we can welcome you to Picture Rocks National Lake. This little interesting rock formation here is Miner's Castle, tower on the front side, 65 feet in height. Used to be another one on the north, just to the left of it, also 65 feet in height. Fell off April 13, 2007. Excellent place for a day trip. If you ever get a chance to come down here, you go east out of town, about five miles, and you hit Miner's Castle Road, go north, about eight miles. Big parking lot right here behind Miner's Castle. Little caves in the bottom going about 10, 15 feet. A lot of people like to mess around and swim out here. One tunnel that goes all the way through the base of it, 45 feet in length. Swim in the front side, crawl the hole above the surface of the water on the back. Oh, we're coming by here last fall. Sun was hitting the rock. Leaves were changing color. They're having a wedding up there. Ladies on our boat thought that was absolutely marvelous. You could tell. They're all ooing and aahing. Only thought that kept running through my mind though was that's the only marriage I know that started on the rocks. Sorry, they only get worse. See some kids swimming on the back side of the rock here. You would have to plan your exits carefully. The water is very cold and will zap your energy quickly. Also, the rock is very rough, like sandpaper, so if you get brushed into it, easily take the skin off your knees. Pressurize in these little caves, the water shoots way up in the air and the wind will catch it and throw it up on top of the cliff. See what appear to be shrubs up there, just stunted trees, stunted by the weight of the ice in the winter. It can easily be three foot of ice up there in the middle of the winter. Right about the kayaker's head there, you see a couple caves to the left, you see how they don't line up anymore, the caves on the water's edge to the right. Got a little fault <laughs> line right there in the corner. 
lovely archway just came into view is what we call lover's leap i wouldn't jump off of that no matter how much i was in love watered up below it is two feet pretty hard to tell this time of day but you might be able to see the sun catching just the edge of the shelf underneath the archway as we round the bend. Next large cave we're approaching here is Rainbow Cave. You might be able to see uh, water dripping inside the cave. It's like it's raining along the cliff at the bottom right side. Water drips through the ceiling year round. See some of that blue green copper on your way in on the right corner. Combination of those oxidized minerals in the ceiling, water dripping through them, winter, create large and beautiful icicles in the middle of the winter. Our rock that just appeared in the distance is the profile of Indian Head Rock. We'll be there shortly. It happened this spring. Actually took away a little bit of our Lakeshore Trail. It'll make you think twice about how close to the edge you hike on a sandstone cliff. It fell down. It fell down. You can see a few hikers up there on top of Indian Men right now. It's part of the backcountry trail coming across Grand Portal and Indian Men. And you can see they're uh, hiking very close to the edge up there. Way up there. The section uh, cliff that came down is the largest collapse I've seen in the 35 years I've been coming here. Large rock formation here is Indian Head Rock. See why the Native Americans, when canoeing along here, were quite frightened. Did she manage these to call him by the Great Spirit? The way I see him, you're looking at the left side of a giant three-dimensional skull. His chin's at the water level, striped deer about halfway up the face of the cliff on the right. Just left of it, elliptical-shaped left eye, looking right at you in the center of the face of the cliff. Outcropping is his forehead, and the rocks at the top of the cliff are his headdress. They flow back into the trees. Indian head stands at just under 200 feet high. also known as the seagull rookery. It's where the seagulls come in the spring of the year to hatch their young. Young seagulls are gray in color and they blend quite nicely into the cliff. Provides them relatively good protection from the falcons and eagles that frequent this area. archway we're approaching is Graham Portal. It's the tallest of all the rocks anywhere along Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. It stands at a height of 202 feet. Oh, you see a Try to get in a little closer to the base and Graham Portal for you. Try to show you the little different perspective on the height of the rock. A lot of uh, traffic down here obviously though. I'll try to hit this also on the way back, and on the way back we'll see if we get in a little closer in a couple areas. Let some of these kayakers thin out a little bit.
Directly off the bow of our boat, see what appears to be the bow of a giant World War II era battleship. That's Battleship Run. Hidden behind it is what we call the Stranded Fleet, or Battleship Row. So I'm swing the bow to the left here in a moment. See if you can use your imagination pick out what appears to be the stern ends of seven battleships lined up on the beach, directly behind Battleship Rock. Oh, there's the beach. And here they come now. Battleship Room. I'm going to try to show you another uh, profile of a face. This one's hard for some people to pick out. Right in front of the boat, you're going to see a mustache at water level. Triangular shaped outcropping for a nose about five feet above the water's edge. Circular cave is going to appear closest to the boat, about ten feet above the water with a black tear dripping out of it. It's our picture rocks pirate, even wearing a tri-cornered cap. Well, that circular cave is known as nature's icebox. Snow and ice in the back of it sometimes till the end of June. Calm day like today. Well behaved kids on board. Ooh, trying to poke the bow into Chapel Cove for you today. I always wanted to try this. out here uh, every once in a while you see a little bit of wildlife also uh, one of the few spots where you'll see people actually jump off the cliff out here by Chapel Hill. Uh, down here to the end of the beach, show you another interesting rock formation called Chapel Rock. Chapel Rock's about 65 feet in height. This image has been placed on the back of the U.S. quarter to commemorate the lake shore. Makes it more interesting is if you look at the 65 foot tree on top of the rock, See, there's not really enough soil up there for that tree to survive. As we scoot on past it, check out the roots hanging off the backside back to the mainland. That's how that tree lives on. The only uh, river that runs off the top of Picture Rocks year round is supplied by a spray creek. In the winter, form an ice column and water will flow right down through the center. Despite its beauty, it's the location of one of the worst maritime disasters on Lake Superior. Ironically, 
The side wheel passenger vessel, the Superior, crashed right below the falls in 1857. All hands on board were lost. What goes down stays down. Lake Superior has the reputation of never giving up its dead. We spent one night at 12 Mile Beach Campground and we were treated to another spectacular light show. Honey, what is normal? Normal is home. Yeah. I'm starting to miss home. Oh, click your heels together three times and say, I wish I were home. Stay here. I don't think he's very happy. He doesn't like being alone. No. It takes adjusting. He's afraid that thunder will come back. Yeah. Oh, it might be a big ship, huh? It is a big ship. What is it? A big ship. Where? There's all kinds of big ships. I forget where I don't on... know what kind of big ship. It looks like an oil rigger platform off the Gulf of the Gulf. <laughs> Galveston. They have that oil be, riggers. That might be Canada over there. Stop with the old Canada. <laughs> We're in the United States. All right, I'm ready to go back before bugs start eating me again. This is, well, it doesn't seem like it's too bad right here, but we've definitely been in the fly pits. Yeah. The fly pits of hell. We don't want no more flies. No, we give up on <laughs> flies. We also spent one night at Hurricane River Campground inside the National Park. This gave us the opportunity to explore many areas along the National Lakeshore. We ended this trip with a stop at the Grand Sable Visitor Center. Join us as we continue exploring the UP. Thanks for watching!